But yeah, this was going on, man. Cyber warfare. This is why you got to learn these skills, baby. This was cracking in the 21st century. You don't have to go over there and drop bombs on people. You can just drop code on people. You can drop email links on people and mess up all kind of stuff, y'all. <laughs> They don't have to come over here and physically invade the country. They could just shut us down. A matter of fact, there's a story I saw. I may have talked about this before. So this happened last year. There's a water treatment facility not too far from where my brother lives in Tampa. It's like, I don't know how close he stays to this thing, but whatever. Anyways, you had a bunch of hackers who were able to get into, who were able to hack this system because this system was using some old piece of software that they were just able to bypass. And then they started going in there, messing with the chemical levels and all kinds of crap luckily somebody caught it if they had a uh, gone unnoticed man they would have poisoned and or killed tens of thousands of people in the tampa bay area in the area that my brother probably gets his water treated from you know what i'm saying so this is real you don't have to physically break into this like like you're in a spy movie you could just be on a computer on the other side of the world and cause all kind of damage this stuff is real there's all type of threats against the nuclear uh, uh the electrical grid this stuff is happening all over the place they mess around and shut the electricity off what y'all gonna do man y'all ever think about that i live in florida so y'all know we got hurricanes coming through all the time luckily we ain't had one come through we had a hurricane come through what was the last major hurricane that came through probably like 2018 when i had just moved back down here man it knocked the power out in orlando damn near all over the city my neighborhood had power somehow some way i was still able to have power but man there were there were neighborhoods down here who didn't have power for like a week and it's hot down here even during the so-called winter months it is hot so imagine if they messed up the electrical grid and your internet went out your ac went out your refrigerator can't keep your food cool what you gonna do most people will freak out man it'll be chaos and confusion all over the place but you don't have to physically go to an electrical grid and, and drop bombs off you can just drop code off so you just drop some code and some email links off. And that's all you got to do to mess up somebody's life here in America. So it's not just about stealing your personal ID, your personal information, or getting access to your bank account, which, you know, they'll do that too. What if they poison your water? Now you can't drink water, take a shower. You around here smelling like hot Karachi and just is looking like a, a zombie from Walking Dead. They can really mess up your whole way of life. How often do you guys think about water treatment facilities? Like, when's the last time you actually had a conversation with somebody about, hey, I wonder what's going on with the water treatment? You don't even think about it. You just go to your sink, turn the knob, and, and you expect clean water, to, or highly chlorinated water to come out, right? Nobody thinks about this crap. Nobody thinks about the electricity. As long as you pay your electrical bill, you expect them doggone lights to come on when you hit that switch, right? You don't think about this crap. But just imagine if they shut this down, how your life would come to a screeching halt, ladies and gentlemen. A screeching halt. What if they, matter of fact, what about the hackers who messed up the uh, the colonial pipeline? Remember that happened last year, the year before? Who remembers that? You can't go to the gas station to get gas, right? Look at this. All these people were affected. I live in Florida. We weren't affected by this. We were good. We get our oil from some, somewhere else. All these people were affected by the colonial pipeline. This thing goes all the way up to New Jersey, from Texas to New Jersey, y'all. Think about how many millions of people were affected by this. You can't go to the gas station to put gas in your car. I don't care if gas costs 50 cent a gallon. Your life finna be all types of tore up from the flow up. And guess what? You ain't got to be right there messing with it. You could be on the other side of the world and just drop an email off of the link and some code and cause all types of headaches. This is why cybersecurity is, is real out in these streets. So anyways, y'all, I just want to share that with y'all, man. Let y'all know the level of sophistication that's going on out in these streets, how these other countries are getting down, how they how they uh, treat this, this IT cybersecurity stuff. We're not treating it nowhere near as serious as other countries. I think we're getting more and more serious because more and more people are starting to realize just how connected we are. Just imagine if somebody hacked into a hospital and locked up a doctor's files. As a matter of fact, this actually happened in the UK not too long ago, if I'm not mistaken. Some medical files were hit with a ransomware attack and it ended up costing somebody their life because the doctors couldn't get access to the medical files to treat the patient and the patient actually died. So I want to say this actually happened last year, if I'm not mistaken. So we got that coming. We're just highly connected. I just saw an article about the uh, Teslas, how people are able to, um, I've never driven a Tesla before, but I was reading about it. Basically something with the key uses NFC, near field communication, but how hackers are able to make duplicate copies of your key or make their own copy of it or make their own key that can work with your Tesla. It's some crazy crap that's going on. So even as these cars are getting more sophisticated and connected, now we got to worry about people hacking into our cars because you know they can do that already if you got a key fob, right? They say if you got a key fob, you should keep your key in the center of your house. And if, if possible, 
put it in some type of um, either wrap it in aluminum foil, put it in a metal box or something that can block that art, that block that signal. Because all somebody has to do is go outside your house and they can take like a scanner. It'd be like a two man operation. You got one guy at your car with a scanner and then another guy looking for the signal from your fob because your key fob is always communicating with your car. And then all they got to do is intercept that signal and then send that signal to the guy with the receiver at the car and they can uh, turn your car on. They might not have access to the key fob, but they can turn your car on. And as long as they got a duplicate signal that that guy's reproducing in the car, they can just drive the car off and just keep rolling. So this is all kind of crazy stuff going on, all type of goofy stuff.